In this video, I'm sharing the current tools I use in my daily work and the AI tools I have in my setup to expand my capabilities. None of these tools are sponsoring this video, I'm just sharing what is working at the moment. Let's see some practical use cases and where I still prefer to do things manually. In my current setup, I use five main tools that work really well together. Let's start with Figma. I'm using Figma to design pretty much everything. Brainstorms on FigJam, designs on Figma design, and when I'm completely blocked, I explore sites and Figma make with their AI features to unblock and get different ideas. It's also perfect for creating prototypes. Then ChatGPT for more systematic tasks like summarizing podcasts, articles, helping me deconstruct ideas from what I'm reading, and image creation for posts and backgrounds for apps and websites. I also use it for video scripting and creating step-by-step -step tutorials. Basically, anything that needs structured thinking, I use ChatGPT for. Then I use Claude as a co-founder for my business. I use it to question me and collaborate on ideas I have for the channel. It's brilliant for deeper conversations and strategic thinking, whether I am brainstorming video topics, refining copy for emails, or just need someone to challenge my assumptions. Then perplexity is my go-to for research. I love how it summarizes what I'm looking for and quickly adds the sources. I also like the follow-up questions to continue the conversation. It feels very natural, this conversation. It's especially useful for finding the latest trends for designers or getting quick statistics for content. And finally, Mobin, essential for understanding flows, component behavior, and UI inspiration from established brands. Mobin doesn't have AI, but it's perfect for collecting visual references and spotting emergency patterns in AI interfaces. It complements the whole workflow really, really well. So these five tools together basically act as my extended creative team. So let me show you a practical case of how I use these tools together to create an app from scratch. Let's imagine I want to create a shopping app. So here's my workflow. I first go to Perplexity to search UI UX trends in Shopping Apps 2025 and examples of AI in Shopping Apps. In seconds, I have updated research on what's working in the market. Then I get real visual references of shopping interfaces in Mobin like navigation, filters, checkout. It's like having a library of best practices always available. Then I go to Claude to brainstorm innovative features. I ask uh, what AI features could I integrate into a shopping app that will actually add value. It's like having a strategic partner challenging my ideas. But I can also go to ChatGPT and ask it to create a detailed user flow roadmap, step by step of the app experience. I also simulate different personas to validate if the feature makes sense. I also ask ChatGPT to generate copy and microcopy for the designs. And I could also generate the images I need to populate the designs. Then I move to Figma. This is where everything comes to life. I apply the mobile references and incorporate ideas from previous steps. If I'm completely out of ideas, I use Figma Make to generate the first version of the interface. With prompts, then I will refine it manually. What it does currently is already very good as a starting point. When I have most of my designs finished, I go to Claude to help me review and refine all interface texts, improve descriptions, and microcopy for clarity and persuasion. And so in less than one hour, I have a functional prototype of a shopping app, research done, user flow defined, and even copy prepared. It's very handy to work in a collaborative way like this, to save some time to focus on solving real problems. Now, let's be honest. Where does this AI workflow shine and where I still consider it short? It's been working really well for me, things like summarizing long podcasts and extracting key insights with the weighted 80-20 rule. Saves hours and highlights what really matters. And blocking ideas when I eat creative blocks using tools like ChatGPT or Claude to help me get unstuck, 
quickly with fresh prompts and new directions, doing quick research on topics outside my expertise, so these tools accelerate the learning curve, bringing answers and trends in minutes. And organizing and renaming layers in Figma is true time saver, but then where I still prefer the manual approach. In complex Figma projects, I think it's harder to use AI features. Figma has been adding more and more AI features, but when the brief requires nuance or customization, I end up spending more time refining prompts here and there than simply design it from scratch. AI is amazing for unlocking ideas and getting close to the right concept, but that final designer's touch, the feeling, the soul of the layout, it's still depending on us. And fully AI-generated designs? Not yet for me. I think they are often look generic, soulless, with that template feel, you know? For truly unique interfaces, nothing beats our experience and creative eye. Also, there are some things AI, I think, just can do as well as people, like understanding cultural details, creating unique brand identities, or designing small personal interactions. And when it comes to private projects, working with business systems or making tough choices, a designer's experience is still essential. Now, one important point before we go further. I use the pro versions of each of these tools. For my workflow and the volume of projects I handle, those extra features and the speed boost make a noticeable difference. But if you're just starting out, here's my honest advice. Always begin with the free versions. Test them out, experiment, and only upgrade if you hit the limits and truly need what the pro tiers offer. Most of these tools have really generous free tiers, so you can get plenty of value right from the start. And just to be clear, none of these apps sponsor this video. I've been using them for months because I'm generally exploring real use cases for designers, and I only recommend what actually helps me in my workflow. The only tool on this list without a free plan, at least at the time I'm recording this, is Mobin. And if you are interested, I do have affiliate links in the description for Mobin and Perplexity. So if you eventually upgrade, you'll be supporting my work at no extra cost for you. And also a quick heads up on low cost aggregator tools. So these days, there are a few platforms out there for a low monthly fee that can uh, let you access ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini and others all through a single dashboard. They can seem like a bargain and they're a great way to test different AI models without paying for each one individually. But be careful, you often don't get the same speed, stability or advanced features as the official pro versions. And also, sometimes there are stricter user limits or restriction on commercial professional use. And most importantly, you might be sending your data through third-party servers, which can be risky for client privacy or confidential projects. I'm curious to test more tools I keep seeing in the community, like Midjourney, Lovable, Bolt, Vio, and probably others. I'll discover along the way. So I haven't compared my workflow with the new GPT-5 model yet, but I've read it's made ChatGPT communication even better. What fascinates me about these tools isn't just efficiency, it's how they push me to think better. As a designer, I've realized our values isn't in the tools we use, but in the quality of our thinking. AI doesn't replace that. If anything, it amplifies that difference. When I use Claude to challenge my thinking, I'm not delegating my choices. I'm creating space for deeper reflection. When I turn to perplexity for research, it's not skipping work. It simply accelerates the journey to what really matters. Synthesis, insight and strategic thinking. But fatigue, stress, fight deadlines, all of those can cloud our thinking. AI helps me stay consistent in my process, even when I'm not at 100%. But here's the real point. These tools are only as powerful as the questions we are able to ask. And that ability to asking smart, critical questions comes from our experience as designers. It's about understanding the problem, not just executing solutions. 
So for me, AI isn't a replacement, it's a thinking partner. It helps me be more strategic, more consistent and more focused on what truly creates value. And the tools evolve, but the thinking is always ours. And that's my current workflow. But it will certainly evolve over the next few months. So tell me in the comments what AI tools are you using in your daily design practice? Let me know in the comments. I love discovering new use cases with these in the community. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to subscribe for more insights on design, technology and creativity. So see you in my next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.